is and throwing the ball with two touchdowns and zero interceptions. His job this week is simple. Do it again. Continue to avoid turnovers and hope that what sunk them last week resolves itself this time around. It's a loss of four on that first play, and it's second down. A shotgun snap for Watson. And he'll be out right at the 35. That's multiple times now. He's tagged him with a big game with his legs. Really showing off some nice awareness and the ability to correctly realize when he's got a chance to tuck it and go himself. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. The Browns send out their punter now. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. It's taken on the 25. Well, on that punt, we've got a man shaken up. And not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him, and we'll step aside for a moment. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. For a lot of people, the MVP award means the quarterback award usually, but over 100 yards again last week. And they're going to have to look his way more than once when giving out this award this season, I think. Yeah, it's not just the consistency. it has been some plays that we've seen where we talk about it for weeks thereafter. That's what we're getting out of him. Over 100 yards last week. He expects to continue that in this game, too. The numbers for him from a week ago, 20 carries, 132 yards, and a touchdown. One thing I do know, teams in the NFL don't treat this like a pitcher throwing a no-hitter. It's been mentioned all week long about going out and getting him the rushing title. He'll see the ball, and he'll see it often. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. The Vikings at 12 and 3 now on the year. And they come in feeling pretty good after back-to-back -back victory CD. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. And they're gonna move it down inside the 25. <laughs> Off the bootleg. Dawson. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down from the 24. They'll go again on second and 10. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? And his kick is right there. It's good, and the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. So an opening drive field goal maybe doesn't whip this crowd into a frenzy, but I think that they will take the early lead. There's no doubt about it. They will always take the early lead, and maybe that celebration comes later if they play well and they can break things open. But right now, this is all about letting the offense just get settled in. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. As the season winds down and you look at them in totality, you know, the offense has struggled. The defense has been pretty good, so I would imagine the changes this offseason may be more on the offensive side of the ball. And this is where we always hear the term complementary football because, as you noted, the defense has played well enough for them to win games, and the offense has held them back. So they've got to reward that defense by improving on offense. I don't know if you make a change of quarterback, running back, tight end. It doesn't matter. Get better players, better system, so they can play to the standards of the defense, and win column will result.
It is certainly becoming rare by the year to see your franchise guy take a hit like that. The defender couldn't believe he had a shot to light him up. So when you take off and run, you have to make sure you can slide, get out of bounds, anything. Just don't leave yourself open to hits like that. First carry for Nick Chubb. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. A check on the numbers for Chubb from a week ago. 13 carries, 57 yards. It's been a strong season for him thus far, sitting currently seventh in the NFL in rushing. He gives our offense really good flexibility because if he's gashing a defense, they can ride him to an early lead. But the defense sells out to stop him, that opens up their passing game. Good job there keeping him to a short gain. Of course, he's coming off a really terrific performance, reigning NFC Defensive Player of the Week. And I know people get caught up in what you're the reigning Defensive Player of the Week. You must have made a bunch of spectacular plays. Like you mixed in a few of those, but most of the plays are just like we saw there. Keep them to short gains, make the fundamental tackle. So that run play nullified by the holding call on the tight end. Yeah, I just think he needs to get off the ball a lot quicker and get into the block a little bit more effectively. Then he doesn't have to reach and grab and try and hold on. Throwing on third down, Watson. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 47. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. They run it again with Chubb. Ooh, with a juke. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. This defense for the Vikings, they were very good last week in the win over New Orleans. And as in any game, takeaways are always a big key. They're always discussed on defense. There's an emphasis there. And, they and he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up fourth. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that is very well done there as this will be marked out of bounds at the five-yard line. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Looking to throw, Dawson. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series. There he goes, left side. The 20. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play there. His 11th touchdown of the year as his guys are able to extend their lead. Boy, Charles, this offense is just so explosive. They lead the league in scoring. 
and another example of just how good they are right there on that play. Yeah, we often overstate about how explosive teams are, but this team is truly a threat to score on every snap, especially on the first few plays of any series. And a big strike like that, that only adds to their reputation as the league's best offense. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead grows to 10 0. So an early 10 0 lead for them now as they kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. They go up the middle with Chubb. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air. Nice chunk of yardage there. And then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Here's Watson. For the reception made over the middle. This is Bolden. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Boy, that's a five-yard loss. Fourth down now. So now on comes the field goal unit. And wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59-yard attempt. And this is going to wind up left. Well struck, but it's no good. 